Hi, everybody. How are you doing? It's Mrs. Ellis with today's art project. Uh, the last two weeks or so, it's been very, very dreary and rainy here in South Florida. We've had hurricane warnings and day after day of rain. So I thought it might be interesting if we did a rainy project. Not a rainy day project, but a project with a painting about rain. It's not a happy looking painting. We're using dull grayed out blues and black with so much water that it looks like gray. And we're showing the raindrops falling down, splashing, making little ripples in the water, spreading out. And it's a lot of fun to do, and it's a different technique. So let me tell you about what we have to have. First, let me put my little messy mat on so I don't make a mess out of everything. There we go. Okay. You're going to need to have a pencil. You're going to need to have crayons. I'm giving you a choice of white or yellow, so you should try each one and see which you like better. You will need your watercolors, of course, with a brush, and you'll need to have your water, a little paper towel or something to blot the brush. And of course, for your paper, we need to have a heavier paper. So for this, boys and girls, you'll need to take a piece of paper from your sketch pad that I told you to buy right at the beginning because it's much heavier. This is the one I bought at Publix. It was not expensive at all, and the paper is very lovely because it's quite thick and can take a lot of water. So this is the paper that you will need. Okay, once we have everything set, we can begin and we're going to be making a rainy day painting so let's get started i'll move everything to the side there we go just put everything over here to get started and let's let's begin okay now with your paper we're going to make the raindrops falling down hard, just as it's been raining here for a while. And we want to use lines at a slight slant to show that the rain is really coming down hard. So lightly with your pencil, don't press too hard on this, boys and girls, try and keep it light. You're going to make long lines coming down to the bottom and every so often a little short line. And you're going to do that again. A short line, a short line, a short line, a short line, a long line, a long line, a long line. Don't stop your lines at the same spot. See, I'm making them all the same. Some should be shorter, some can be longer. You need about, oh, I'd say maybe five or six. Here's a short and a long, short and a long. And I think I can maybe stick one more in here. Long, short, long. And I'll make two long ones. This is up here and here. I think that's enough. Now at the end of the line, you're going to have the little raindrop hitting the ground. So there's your little raindrop hitting the ground. Okay, those are slanted this way. I also made one slanted the other way. Uh, something's on there, there it is. I think I can use another one here. Depending on whether you're lefty or righty, that's probably the way you would slant them. Little raindrop on the end of your line, kind of hitting the ground. There we are. There we are. And now, when the raindrop hits the ground, it sends out little ripples. 
that go spread out. Ripples are in the shape of ovals, not round. We want to make them look oval. Here's your dot. This is round. We don't want to have it round. We want to have an oval, sort of a flat oval. So at the end of each drop, you're going to make two or three if you want them to be really big ovals. You can have two. You can also have them beginning another ripple, like little parentheses on there. Two or three and maybe some little beginning ripples. One, two, three. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that one. Notice how they're sort of flattened circles. Oh, they're not big round rings. One, two, and some more ripples starting. So we have that in, and you don't need too many. Uh, you know, we just want to get the effect. Okay. I'm going to switch papers. I have one here. Now, here's where your crayon comes in. You're going to use either the yellow crayon or the white to go over this because when we use our watercolor, we want it to go right over the raindrops falling down. I'll do half in white and half in yellow. Don't you do half, you're going to see what mine looks like and then pick the one you want the best. So when you do it, press hard on the crayon. It's good to have something soft under you, like a magazine, not on the hard table. This is very soft. I have several layers of paper. And press down and leave a nice mark. The last line should go right into the drip and then just follow it around. Press down, press down. If you want to go over it two times, you can. But press down. Right into the drip. And then the ripples go around and around and around. Don't worry if you go out of the line a little bit. That's fine. Press down. I'll go over that again. I'll go over that two times to make sure it's really a lot of crayon on there. Here's the last one right into the drip and around my ripple and another ripple. Here we go. Press hard, press down, right into the drip. That last line goes into the drip. And then when it splashes and makes a ripple, it goes around and around. Now I'll do some white just so you can see the difference. When it's your turn, you'll figure out which one you like to do. The problem with the white is it's hard to see what you did. You just have to hope you did it. If you look in the light a certain way, you can see it and you can feel it too. Right into the drip and around and around as the ripple goes into the water there we go and my last one press hard press hard i went twice all the way into the raindrop on the ground and then the ripple starts to go out from it oh i almost forgot to tell you you have to do a line too between which is the ground and which is where the water is I almost forgot to tell you, so you need to make a line. It's a good thing I remembered. I did it here. And then, don't forget to go over it with the crayon. And I'm pressing, you know, kind of hard. I, I'll do it twice, just to make sure I have a good, thick line. And if I look into the light, I can see it's shiny where I did it. Okay, so I have this all done. But remember, yours will be either all yellow or all white. Now we're ready to uh, do our watercolors to get our rainy day. So we'll put our pencil aside and we'll put our crayons aside. And here's our watercolors with the water. 
and a little paper towel in here. Now we're going to do something a little bit unusual. This is the top of your palette. This is your palette of watercolors, and this is the top. We're going to put paint in the top because we're going to add lots, lots and lots of water to it. We're going to use two colors, the blue and the black. But the black is going to be very, very, very watery. So it's really not black. It's more like gray. So we'll start by picking up some water and filling up the blue, rubbing it around a little, and fill this whole area with the blue. I'm just putting lots of blue paint there. Lots and lots of blue paint. See, I'm filling it up. Good. Now I'm gonna wash my brush and take the tiniest, tiniest little, little bit of black and put it here. And now to that, we add lots and lots of water with our brush. We don't want it to be dark black. We want it to look very watery, almost like a gray. And now we can begin. I think I need more blue. More blue, I don't have enough because that's a big area. Okay, now pick up some water, mush it around there and start to paint. If you really pressed on the crayon, you will see, always get more water, you will see how it resists and pulls away. Go right across, let the water, you can have plain water in there, let the water move your paint. Now pick up water in the black, a little bit more. I want it, although I want it gray, oop, too much. See, there we go, the water. Don't be afraid to mix them together on there. Let the water blend them together. There we go. Like a gray, cloudy day. That's it. Always add more water to the color. More water, if it's too dark, add more water. And just let the water carry your blues and your grays together to give you that sort of rainy, dreary feeling. There we go. Lots of water and some paint. There. If it puddles up a little bit, that's okay, leave it. If you run out of blue, add a little touch of blue to that, but stop when you get to the line here. A little, little bit here. Oh boy, this reminds me of the days we've had with our rainy, rainy hurricane weather and stormy weather. Yes. And stop when you get here. Let the water carry it all around. Now down here, we're going to make our blue a little grayer. So we're going to take some of some more blue, put it in there with lots of water, and add a little bit of this black to it to make it a darker, a little darker blue, sort of a grayish dark blue. If it's not dark enough, add a little more. There we go. There we go. And take a little of the plain black again, which is like a gray. There we go. Add water. Remember, let the water do its job of carrying the paint around. Dip it in more water. There we go. It goes rather quickly, you notice? Yeah. You go right over your crayon. If you pressed hard like I asked you to, you'll be able to see your watercolors go right over the crayon. If you want to touch up a few spots, add a little more darker color you can. But remember, keep it watery. Keep it, keep it watery. Always with the water on your brush. That little spot there, 
And there we are. There's our rainy watercolor day. When it dries, it'll be a little lighter. But here's our rainy watercolor day. Rain hitting down on the pavement and making little ripples out into the water. So I hope you enjoyed making this painting and I'll see you next time, boys and girls.